Hey guys, it's Haley and welcome to another bookish video. Today I'm going to get into a little book haul for you guys. I've been traveling and I love to mark some of my vacations and travels with a good little book haul. So when I'm reading the books, I'll either read them on the vacation, it'll be like my vacation reads, or I will be reminded of my vacation and it'll be like kind of like a little keepsake of some sort. So I'm very excited to share those with you. Also, my reading taste is ever evolving, ever changing, so I have some of my like new reading era books to show you guys and I'm very interested on y'all's opinions on those books and of course as always we have some thrillers some horror some new release thrillers kind of like my good tried and true so I'm super excited to share all of these books with you today but before we get into the haul I do want to thank the sponsor of this video Hungry Minds so the people over at Hungry Minds they are this like creative group of artists and researchers and they made a book just based on contributions from Kickstarter and Indiegogo and you're gonna die when I show you this book. It is literally called The Book. Like it is the book. Like if you want a book, this is the book. The Ultimate Guide to Rebuilding Civilization. And it has this encyclopedia of knowledge on the inside. When I tell you, these are some of the most beautiful images I've ever seen. Like this is more than just a coffee table book. This is absolutely incredible. It's over 400 pages of chronicling the human experience. There are 180 topics divided over 23 chapters chapters beautiful beautiful illustrations and y'all this is so high quality i can't even express to you the level of craftsmanship that went into this i'm astounded every time i look through it and flip to a new section i'm just amazed this is probably my favorite page look at this the exotic fruits <gasps> look at these illustrations like when i tell y'all these are gorgeous i can't I've never wanted to learn about fungi before, but now because of this book, I do. It is the perfect encyclopedia that doesn't feel like your grandma's encyclopedia. It has some cool information, but beyond that, it is absolutely gorgeous. Perfect as a gift for a book lover, or if you're a book lover yourself, which if you're not, what the hell are you doing watching this video? <laughs> you can check it out for yourself as well. Honestly, my first impression of this book was that it was gonna be like kind of your typical encyclopedia, and it's just definitely not. This is like an adult storybook. You know what? That is my impression of it after reading through it. You have practical knowledge in here like hello meteorology like this is science but it's interesting and it's gorgeous and this massive high quality book like i cannot wait to display this in my house here is just like a breakdown of all the sections so you can see you can pause to read i am absolutely enamored with this i really hope you guys will go and check it out i can't wait to put it on my shelves and just like like i said like treat it like an adult storybook like maybe you want to read one and just get a little bit of knowledge and beauty before you go to bed i think it's so cool i know i've been showing like a million pages but i just can't like it's gorgeous it is gorgeous i'm so glad that this came to fruition and if you want one for yourself i have a discount code for you you can use the code hughes 10 just my last name and 10 for a discount on the book thank you so 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 much to hungry minds for sponsoring this video i hope you guys will go and check this out it is so cool so of course the book is the first book that i'm gonna haul for you guys and now let's get into the rest of the 40 ish books that i have to show you here i will start with some of my vacation reads how about that if you know me and you know my reading taste at all you know that i love magical realism and i love rebecca searle i love the way that she does magical realism so this is her new release from this year expiration dates i got this one to read on the plane when i went to la last month and it was the perfect plane read it was just short enough for me to finish it on a three and a half ish hour plane ride and it was actually set in la and all these like beautiful 
places all across LA, which is where I was flying. I didn't know that when I picked up the book, but I was so happily surprised to see that when I got into it. This is a magical realism story about a woman who is kind of trying to figure herself out and also find love, but she has this weird thing about her where every time she's about to get into a relationship, she gets this little slip of paper and it has the prospective partner's name and a length of time. So she can kind of go into every relationship fully prepared for the exact amount of time that she will have to invest until she gets a blank sheet of paper. And she's like, uh, did I find my forever person? And we follow her in all of the emotions, twists, and turns that result from that. It was so good. If you saw my wrap up, which if you missed it, I will link it up above and down below. But if you already watched my wrap up, not to completely spoil it, but this is my best book of the year so far. I just absolutely love it. It was perfectly suited to my taste. I don't know what to say. I cried on the airplane. And the book that I read on the way back from LA was This Could Be Us by Kennedy Ryan. I actually picked this one up at Book People in the airport. If you ever fly into or out of Austin, you know you gotta stop at Book People. It's one of our indie bookstores in town that has a little branch open in the Austin airport. So that's where I got This Could Be Us. And I had never read from Kennedy Ryan before, but ever since reading this, I'm in. Stay tuned for my April wrap up to hear about my full thoughts on This Could Be Us. But this is a romance that kind of starts out as a little bit of a thriller. Basically, we are following this housewife. She's rich. She's got it all together. Perfect family. But she starts to find out that her husband is not exactly who he seems and everything falls apart. But then the latter half of the book is her putting it back together solo and in a new healthy relationship, consequently with the man who sent her husband to prison. It is so emotional, so many twists and turns, and just iconic. Seriously, now that I've read Kennedy Ryan's romance, I don't know how I'm gonna read any of these other little ass rom-coms because she just set the bar way too high. I'm so excited for the rest of this trilogy and getting into Kennedy Ryan's backlist as well. And the next book that I'm about to haul for y'all is actually because of This Could Be Us. Uh, the main character in that book, while well, she's on her like solo healing journey post her first husband she reads this book and it's referenced and quoted all throughout this could be us and that is all about love by bell hooks okay this just sounded like what i needed after reading how it helped this main character i know it's fiction but i was like kennedy ryan must have gotten something out of this so this is the first volume in love song to the nation which is by bell hooks it's this whole like series i guess and it's about defining love not as a noun but a verb and it's a very provocative and personal critique with feminist commentary on our view of love as romance she explores what is love through her own search for emotional connection and society's failure to provide a model for learning how to love healthily. It is literally blurbed by Maya Angelou and Gloria Steinem. So I don't know how I've never read this one, but I'm so excited to get into it. Next up, I have a couple things that I ordered off Pango Books. If you don't know, I have a code with Pango Books. You can get $5 off any order from Pango. I love, 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 love Pango. It's just a book like buy and resell site where you don't have to buy books new and feed into the consumerism of it all. We can just go back and support each other's bookshelves and pass a ton around. So if you want $5 off, you can use my code. I believe it's Haley Hughes, just Haley Hughes. But when you use that, I do get a little kickback of Pango Books as well. So that is how I got these few books from Pango. First up, we have So Sad Today. This is a personal essay collection from Melissa Broder. I featured it in my Melissa Broder taste test, which if it's not up already, it will definitely be up in the next few days. So keep an eye out for that. Subscribe if you want to see 
see it. This is just a collection of essays that Melissa wrote about her own kind of like memoir-esque struggles, mental health, relationships, etc. If you like something like Everything I Know About Love by Dolly Alderton, but you want something a little bit more edgy, I would say this is good for you. I also got The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston, and this is a romance with a little bit of a speculative twist that so many people had on their best books of the year last year. Specifically, one of my best bookish friends, Deja, loves, loves, loves this book, so I had to give it a try and see what it's about. And it's about a woman who falls in love with a man from the past. There's this like time slippage passageway in her apartment that she's staying in and she meets the guy who lived there seven years ago and they start to form this romance. I love the magical realism, I love the speculative little elements, and I love a good emotional romance so I have high hopes for this one. Next up I have the couple editions of Spy X Family that I was missing or the couple like volumes I guess. I was missing five and eleven. I have all the rest of them but I needed to fill it in so I could binge them all back to back to back and now that I have five through eleven uh I'm gonna literally take an afternoon and just binge them all this is the only manga that I've read but I guess that means it's my favorite <laughs> I don't know I just think this story is so adorable it's about a fake family that's been put together to complete this spy mission and they each have like a weird thing about them and it's adorable and just feels so fun it's such an easy read love this series. Next up, I picked up Dreaming of You, a novel in verse by Belissa Lozada Oliva. And I also got this one from Pango. It is in such good condition. I literally couldn't believe it. Sometimes, you know, Pango books, they always have a little lived in quality but this one is so nice so thank you to the seller for that and honestly the cover really drew me in also the fact that it's in verse i've only really read books in verse that are ya i love the black flamingo by dean Ada, and i love all of elizabeth acevedo's work but i was looking for something that's a little bit more adult written in verse so i found dreaming of you this is a novel in verse of loss longing and identity crises following a poet who resurrects the pop star Selena from the dead. I can't. I literally can't. I think I'm gonna live for it. And the last few books that I got off Pango here are some Fear Street first edition first printings. I am still trying to collect them all, although I have slowed down my obsession just a little bit because while my shelves are like in their transitionary period, if you don't know, I'm redoing my entire library. Stay tuned. There will be a video on it. It's uh, taking a lot longer than I hoped, but I'm trying to slow down my book collecting <laughs> in the meantime, but I could not resist this duo. I have The Dare and Night Games. These came in a little duo on Pango and they're such good quality for first edition first printings. The Dare says nice girls don't kill. Joanna has always longed to be a part of the rich popular crowd and she can't believe it when Dennis, this popular guy, finally asks her out. And now she'll do anything to hang on to this group. So when he dares her to kill their teacher, she doesn't say no. She can't. Besides, it was a joke, right? Well, now the joke has gone too far and the dare is serious. Dead serious. Will she do it? Will Joanna really kill for love? <laughs> like, how campy and amazing does that sound? And then we have Night Games, which follows Diane, who loves sneaking out in the middle of the night with her friends. They have the town all to themselves and every night they come up with a new prank to play. But then her boyfriend Lenny wants revenge on a teacher and the pranks turn to murder. Now Diane and her friends are in way too deep. Why teacher murder? Like what, what is the deal with the teacher murder? I don't know. Next up, I have some books that I got just randomly off Amazon. I have The Losers Part 1 by Harley LaRue, and I really want to do a Harley LaRue taste test as I'm getting more into dark romance. So I went ahead and picked up The Losers Part 2, so I have it on deck when I film that vlog. This is a reverse harem romance, bully romance type of situation about a popular girly like strong female character and then her group of loser twinkie boys <laughs> 
don't know. I don't know if that is accurate at all, but I can't. I'll vlog it. Okay, we'll see you together. I also picked up Oh Honey by Emily Austin. I loved Everyone in This Room Will Someday Be Dead by Emily Austin. Last year was one of my favorite books of the year. And this is her poetry collection, I believe, or... No, 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 this is not her poetry collection. This is a novella. I have the poetry collection, we'll get to that. But this is a novella about Jane, who is a telemarketer. And she uses a different name each time she makes a call. But soon it becomes clear she's calling the same man over and over and each call is a new battle between them she's not calling him at random she has a purpose and a past which seems to change every time she tells it it's a sharp funny and dark novel about identity and connection that sounds perfect for me i love emily austin's writing style so can't wait for that and as i alluded to i also have her poetry collection this is called gay girl prayers um yeah I'm very excited for that. It's going to be the religious trauma of it all, the LGBTQIA representation of it all, and like I said, love her writing style. Next up, if you saw my little free library vlog, which I had so much fun filming, I will link it up above and down below as I always do. I just explored some little free libraries around my neighborhood. It was so much fun, and I did find a book to take home with me. I found The Forgotten Girl by India Hill Brown, and I've heard such amazing things about this middle grade. It's supposed to be really dark and actually really good for adults as well. It says, do you know what it feels like to be forgotten? On a cold winter night, Iris and her best friend Daniel sneak into the woods to play in the snow where she makes a perfect snow angel only to uncover the crumbling gravestone of a young girl. Soon, strange things start happening to Iris. She's having nightmares and seeing the shadow of the girl lurking around in the night. She also feels a pull to the grave. Obsessed with figuring out what's going on, Iris and Daniel start to investigate and discover the grave is a part of an abandoned black cemetery. They're determined to restore the grave and have proper respect paid to this little girl and the others buried there, but they have summoned a jealous and demanding ghost, one who is not satisfied with their plans, tired of being overlooked, and wants Iris and her best friend forever. So there are layers to this middle grade. It sounds really good and I can't wait to review it for you. I also had a book sent to me by one of my lovely subscribers and patrons, Dawn. You know I love you, girl. She sent me Take Me With You. There's a reason it's called The Dead of Night from the author of Debt. Author of Debt. I don't know what that means. Nina G. Jones. That's kind of a tongue twister. I wanted to say Gina G. Jones, but it's Nina G. Jones. Dawn said she stayed up all night reading this. She could not put it down. It gave her similar feelings to other books that we both love, love, loved. So she sent it my way. It says, I always go in with a plan, a set of rules for myself, and I don't take unnecessary risks. That's how I've been able to to evade capture all of these years. But there's something about this girl that's different than the others. When I finally meet her, the rules become a blur and I break the most important one of all. I take her with me. <gasps> Ooh, serial killer romance, I fear. I'm definitely gonna have to get into this. I fear I might read this one in one night as well. Thank you so much, Dawn. All right, next up I have a little grouping of books that I picked up in Florida. Cameron and I went to Florida for spring break. I filmed the entire thing as a vlog. I read some beachy books and some rich people drama thrillers. It was so, so much fun. And I went to the little bookstore in Rosemary Beach and picked up a few things. First up, I got a copy of One Italian Summer by Rebecca Searle. This was my favorite book of a few years ago and I never had a physical copy of it. It is so beachy and so perfect for like the vibes that I was feeling in Florida. So I just went ahead and picked it up there. It makes having this copy so, so special and it's one of my favorite books of all time. I really wanna reread it this summer. So I'm very happy that I have it and it's so pretty. If you don't know this, this is another magical realism book about a girl who loses her mother and she's grieving 
thing and she had this trip to Italy planned with her mom that obviously they're not going to end up going on but she decides to go solo and while she's there she meets a younger version of her mother and they go on this trip together retroactively. It is so moving, so beautiful, so perfect. I'm obsessed with this book. I also picked up the next book in the Finlay Donovan series. Finlay Donovan rolls the dice. I still need to read the third one but I would love to read the third one and fourth one back to back. One of my toxic traits is that I love to collect a series as it comes out and then binge it all. <laughs> I did that with Throne of Glass and I fear I'm going to do that with Crescent City as well and I'm definitely doing that with Finlay Donovan. I just, I'm a bingeable girl, okay? I don't like to have to remember things. I love to be empty headed and just read things for fun as they come. I don't want to have to remember things a year later when the next book comes out. So I picked this one up in Florida. Can't wait to read this one that I have over here on my shelf and this one together and if there's a fifth one, you know what? I'm going to have to forget it all and then y'all are gonna have to remind me before I pick that one up. And then the last book that I picked up in Florida was Acts of Violet by Margarita Montemore. I love Una Out of Order by this author. Again, another one of my favorite magical realism books. So I was super interested in this one. This is about a woman who was like a famous magician and her final act that she ever performed was she literally disappeared straight into thin air. So this guy is obsessed with her case and it's now 10 years later and he's trying to solve it. He's also trying to solve it by interviewing her sister who has seemingly disappeared out of thin air as well. So he's trying to track both of these girls down. We're going to figure out their story, how she disappeared, how the sister disappeared. I think it's going to be so like sleuthy mystery but with a fun little magical twist as Margarita Montemore does really well as well. I can't wait for some hopefully time travel. Y'all know I love of that in my magical realism. I will let y'all know the tea when I get to this one. Oh, okay. We have a little stack here of more books that I got from Pango that I just forgot. I have them in a different area. So these are going to be the last of it for my Pango pickups this month or so. Uh, I have Asking for It by Louise O'Neill. And I got this recommendation from Jordaline. It is like a dystopian young adult kind of like sci-fi vibe, but it sounded really good. I think it's about like rape culture and commentary on rape culture and like a society that is similar to our own, but slightly altered. There's another book that I picked up by this author on Jordaline's recommendation called Only Ever Yours. And it's kind of a similar vibe. I really want to read both of them soon. I also got Black Eyed Susans by Julia Heberlin. I realized once I picked this one up that I actually meant to get Black Widows by Kate Quinn, but I mixed these two books up in my head. They're both thrillers, so oops, but uh, I have Black Eyed Susans now, and I actually realized that I've read from this author and enjoyed her in the past. I believe she wrote We're All the Same in the Dark, and I enjoyed that one. Now I have um, Black Eyed Susans to read, which is also giving very spring, so you know, I'm not mad. It says, at 16, Tessa Cartwright was found barely alive in a field of flowering Black Eyed Susans amid a scattering of unidentified female bones and no memory of how she got there. Now an adult with a teen of of her own she carries the ghosts of those dead girls and the guilt that her testimony may have put the wrong man on death row now she's suppressing old secrets and a new terror on a recent night someone has planted black-eyed susans under her windowsill is the real killer still out there Ooh. okay wait this actually sounds really good i'm not even mad about my little empty-headed mix-up uh, I'm excited for this one. And the actual last book that I picked up from Pango is A Love Song for Ricky Wilde by Tia Williams. I loved Seven Days in June by this author last year. Again, one of my favorite books of the year. I'm really trying to trust my tried and true authors that have already given me a favorite of all time and pick up more from them. So this is Tia Williams' release from this year. I 
think this is about a girl who's like restarting her life opening a flower shop in new york city like she just leaves everything behind and goes for this alternate dream but somehow she's like sucked into 1920s new york harlem renaissance kind of vibe it has time travel it's a little bit magical realism a little bit romance a little bit woman finding herself sounds right up my alley next up let's get into the books that were kindly sent to me by the publishers quite a few of these are arcs so i will be reviewing them for y'all in the coming months first up we have savor it by tara dewitt and this goes on sale may 21st it is a grumpy sunshine small town romance that takes place in oregon after sage's ex gets engaged she wants revenge on him so she decides to do that by fake dating someone in a cooking competition sounds adorable next up i have the heart of winter by shona kinsella and this one comes out april 2024 so sometime this month it's about a queen who is fleeing to the highlands in hopes to learn how to live on her own terms without the need for a man to speak for her free from men's control but can she persuade this mystical being that she is worthy of this gift or will she have to return home and give up everything caught between the two and finding an unlikely ally in a fey witch this queen will be tested to her limits and beyond so this is more like fantasy but i love that it seems like it's a standalone and it's pretty small for my fantasy taste this seems perfect and then i have this like mysterious little letter here i love when arcs come with like cool press like this if something happens to me by alex finlay new release thriller will be on sale may 28th i feel kind of mixed about alex finlay books i think i've given most of them like 3.5 stars like this is giving three 3.5 just like out the jump but i also had one that i really didn't like and i gave one star so hopefully this one is a little bit of an improvement from that but it says for the past five years this guy has relived one terrible night car doors ripping open blows to the head hands yanking from the vehicle and his girlfriend scream piercing as she is taken with no trace of her or the car suspicion hangs over this guy but with no proof he's never charged for any crime but it doesn't matter to the internet trolls. Now he's completely changed his identity and entered law school to put the past behind him until years later, he gets a call that the car has been found submerged in a lake with two bodies in it. Ah! Okay, so he didn't do it or did he? Okay, wait, this actually sounds really good. I'm interested, I'm interested. Next up, I have my picks from Book of the Month for the last couple months. I don't know about y'all, but I feel like Book of the Month has been absolutely popping off lately. So I have Darling Girls by Sally Hepworth, new release thriller about a group of three girls who were taken into foster care by this woman who was seemingly kind-hearted, but maybe uh created a tough environment for them because there are bodies found on this woman's property and now the three girlies are suspects this is one i'll definitely be reading this month for my new release thriller vlog and i cannot wait for it they also had a ya thriller from holly jackson available as an add-on this month this is the reappearance of rachel price it's about this girl who has always lived in the shadow of her mother's disappearance and this true crime case just kind of pervades everything about her existence until Rachel Price, her mother, reappears yet again and turns everything on its head. So we are wondering where the hell has she gone and is there more to the story? I love Holly Jackson's writing. I love AGGGTM. So I'm hoping this is just as good. Let's just hope it's not um, anything like the last book in that trilogy because I just pretend that that doesn't I also have If You're Lucky by Stacey Willingham, another new release thriller here. It seems like it's about toxic female friendship. There's this whole group of girls and they kind of each play a role in the group. One of them is a little bit mysterious though. And when they wake up one morning to her missing and a frat boy in the frat house next door, dead, murdered, stabbed, donezo, they're like, mm, 
did our bestie just kill this boy? I feel like this is gonna be drama, obsession, twists, and just salaciousness. I cannot wait. Next up, I have one that has been really interesting me. I've seen a lot of people pick this one up, and that is Annie Bot by Sierra Greer. It's this AI perfect girlfriend, basically. But with her AI-ness, she is learning as she's in this relationship with this human man. So I'm pretty sure we're following the AI as she learns about misogyny and the impossible paradox of what it is to be a woman. It sounds like that one episode of Black Mirror and I'm literally obsessed. Like I haven't even read this yet. I'm already obsessed. I need to read it immediately. Another new release thriller here. I have Kill For Me, Kill For You by Steve Cavanaugh. This is another one that I fear I'm going to have to put in a new release thriller vlog soon. I think it's kind of like a strangers on the train situation where two strangers decide to kill each other's people for each other, but it has a twist things go wrong. I've heard really good things about it. I'm excited. And my last pick from book of the month has been Listen for the Lie by Amy Tintera. And this is another one that I've heard good things about. It says, what if you thought you murdered your best friend and everyone else thought so too? But what if the truth doesn't matter? Lucy and Savvy were the golden girls of their small Texas town, pretty smart and enviable. Lucy married a dream guy with a big ring and an even bigger new home. And Savvy was the social butterfly loved by all. But after Lucy is found wandering the streets covered in her best friend Savvy's blood, everyone thinks that she is a murderer. It's been years since that horrible night, a night Lucy can't remember anything about since she has moved and started a new life. However, a new true crime podcast and its two good looking hosts have decided to investigate Savvy's murder for the show's second season. And Lucy is forced to return to the place that she vowed to never set foot in again to solve her friend's murder, if she's even the one who truly did it. The truth is out there if you listen. Y'all know I'm not a big fan of a podcast thriller. I feel like that's kind of played out at this point. It was super tropey for a while and it just kind of started getting on my nerves. But with all the good reviews I'm seeing for this one, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe I'll like it. And this last little section of books here are all things that I picked up in LA. I had a ton of indie bookstores on my list in California and I stopped by quite a few of them. So I have a ton of things to show you. I have I Can See Your Lies, which is a horror novella by Izzy Lee. I have no idea about this. Um, I was just describing my taste to the man who runs Dark Delicacies. It's a horror only bookstore on Horror Row in Burbank. And he recommended this. It's signed by the author. And I was like, yeah, sure. Uh, why not? So <laughs> I don't know. There's no description, just blurbs. I we'll see. And while I was there, I also picked up The Angel of Indian Lake by Stephen Graham Jones. This is the third book in the series that follows Jade, our final girl obsessed main character from My Heart is a Chainsaw. I've heard that the second book is a lot better than the first. So I ended up picking that one up, uh, I think October last year. And now I have a third one. Again, I will be doing my series binging so I don't have to remember. And this one also sounds Sounded so so interesting so I picked it up there as well. Thirst by Marina Yuzu and translated by Heather Cleary. Okay uh, this is the author. Uh, apparently this is a translated work which I didn't realize but it's giving bisexual vampires so you know that I had to pick it up. It says across two different time periods two women one vampire one mortal confront a yearning that will not let them rest. It's a genre blurring novel from an exciting new voice of Latin America's feminist gothic genre. Yes. The last thing that I picked up from Dark Delicacies was Poor Things by Alice Dare Gray. And this is the book that the iconic movie was based on. I haven't seen it yet because I've been waiting to read the book first. One of my best friends who actually went to Dark Delicacies with said, I'm going to be obsessed with this. This is going to be like my favorite thing of all time. So I need to read the book so I can watch the movie and then text him and we can both freak out together. And this last grouping of books I just picked up from random little indies around LA and all of them I know like zero about. So very excited 
excited to get into them, but I probably won't share much here because I honestly just don't know. I was just going off vibes, okay? And I picked up a lot of stuff that I've never heard anyone talk about. First up, we have Users by Colin Winnett. It's about an app, I believe, that like simulates online dating. I don't know. It's like virtual reality, weird, magical realism, sci-fi about identity and dating. Then we have Girlhood by Melissa Feb. Phoebos, Phoebos, Phoebos. And this is about Melissa's own experience about when her body started to change, transitioning from a little girl to a teen to a woman and all of the things that came along with it. It's a memoir of sorts through a feminist lens. Then we have What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. I've never read from T. Kingfisher. I don't know anything about what this book is about, but I know a lot of the girlies love it. I've never seen it in person and realized it was so teensy teeny tiny. So I thought it would be a good Good little horror novella to reinvigorate my horror reading in 2024. Then I found Happy Hour, a novel by Marlo Granados. This is about apparently what it means to get by and have fun in a system that wants you to do neither. It sounds like it's just these two girl best friends who moved to New York and are trying to make it through all these different jobs and they keep like self-sabotaging or getting pushed out or the system is just against them and they have to pick it up and start over again and how they're still finding joy in between all of their shifts and transitions in their 20s. I love it. And finally, the last book I have to share with you that I picked up in LA is Disorientation by Elaine Hasia Chu Chow Chow. I'm gonna go with that. It's about privilege, power, and unexpressed female rage as an Asian woman kind of breaks down her own relationship to her culture and also confronts her sticky relationship with white men and white institutions. I am very interested. The tagline is who gets to tell our stories and how does the story change when we finally tell it to ourselves? So this sounds like very therapeutic, very much about identity. I love it. So as you can see, kind of a different vibe for this haul than previous ones. Let me know if you've read any of these books and there's any that I should prioritize or specifically set aside to read in vlogs. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. If you liked it, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Don't forget to go check out the book from the amazing minds at Hungry Minds. Support them and their amazing Not Your Mama's Encyclopedia. It is so cool. And of course, don't forget to go to therapy and read a book this week. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!